Athens, Georgia, where today East meets West. Two schools with great history and tradition get together for the very first time as SEC opponents, believe it or not. A big part of Texas A&M's tradition made a road trip last night. The midnight yell wasn't at Kyle Field, but rather Buford, Georgia, about 50 miles west of Athens. And moments ago, a once-a-year tradition took place in Athens, Senior Day. J.R. Reed making his 40th straight start for the Bulldogs. Brian Harriet, such a huge part of the offense as both a runner and a receiver. David Marshall, his 42nd game on the defensive line for the Dogs. And maybe only place in college football where the top ovation is saved for the kicker, Rodrigo Blankenship, one of 24 seniors honored here today. And with that, the Home Depot SCC on CBS brings us to a rainy Vince Dooley Field at Sanford Stadium. Between the hedges and our matchup, the Aggies of Texas A&M on the road against the number four team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs. And we welcome you, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. My partner, as always, is Gary Danielson. We've seen these two teams throughout the year, Gary. Texas A&M has been growing. Georgia's right where they want to be. Three times now the SEC East champ. Really interesting, yes. Georgia wants to take those next steps. They want to get a little more offense. They know they compete for the national championship. They know they're good at us. They want a little more points. Texas A&M wants to see if they can match up. They know they got this game and LSU to see where they got to go to get there next year. Well, you mentioned the Georgia offense. Right now, their defense is where they're hanging their hat. It is unbelievable. They've got so many many great players whether they're first string second string doesn't matter they come in might play 25 different players and you can't tell the top guy from the bottom guy they are a championship defense and getting better every week what a thing to watch they have a lot of speed on that defense I think they're going to have their hands full today this is a Texas A&M team that we right. saw against Alabama since that time they're playing their best football they are they got a couple things really going for them they got a veteran quarterback that Georgia has not seen all year since the Notre Dame game Kellen Mann might be the best combination they're going to face all year, thrower and runner. And since we've seen him, he's now got some help. He's got two runners back there. Isaiah Speller, the true freshman, four 100-yard games already. And Cordarian Richardson, 240-pound sledgehammer, two guys to help Jimbo's offense go here today. Well, they might need those running backs because it's a soggy field right now. With more on that third member of our team is Jamie Erdahl. It is soggy because, Brad, in the last hour before kickoff, nearly two-tenths of an inch of rain have fallen. The players, their equipment, the ball, the field are all saturated. I just saw sand thrown on the end zone to soak up some of that rainwater. I confirmed with several Georgia coaches that this weather, eerily similar to the game at home against Kentucky a month ago. Kirby Smart said in that game and this one, it becomes a ball possession and field position issue. You feel like every play, you're on the edge because one explosive play, one field goal could determine the game. Brad, to note, Jake Braun has a glove on that throwing hand. He never does that unless he has grip issues on the ball. So I'm going to watch today. All right, Jamie, try to stay dry. It adds to the drama. The Bulldogs and the Aggies for the first time as SEC opponents. It's coming up from Athens in a moment. Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Sonic, Amazon, Verizon, and by Allstate. Welcome to Athens, Georgia, for another football Saturday in the SEC. This week, it's the Aggies versus the Bulldogs. Tight end for the 
Touchdown. Got to go deep. Blaylock. Touchdown. This is the Home Depot SEC on CBS. The best game from the best conference. Thank you, Jason Aldean, whose new album came out yesterday, and we back is on it at Kirby Smart and his Georgia Bulldogs. On it, ready to take the field at home. They come in 9-1, and 6-1 in conference play, and very much in the discussion for not just the SEC championship, but the national title picture as well. And from College Station, Texas, and the SEC West, Jimbo Fisher and the 7-3 and Aggies of AM. Seven and 7-3, but those three losses, two were to number one teams, Clemson and Alabama at the time. The other was to number eight, Auburn at the time. That is a tough schedule. Today, their dates with number four, Georgia. Next week, number one, LSU. That's how loaded the a &M schedule has been. Sixth meeting all time. Reveille's here. She and Ugga had a little uh, gathering before the game. And Georgia's going to get the football first as AM won the toss and deferred. I do get the feeling, though, Ness, that after talking to Jimbo, he's going to be really disappointed if his team doesn't show up and play a really good football. He thinks they're ready to step up to this competition. They've won four in a row, five of their last six, and that's since we saw them against Alabama. A fired up, rain soaked crowd at Sanford Stadium. Braden Mann will tee it up for the Aggies. Back deep, Brian Herrian and Zamir White. And we're on the road. And at the last moment, Herrian ducks and lets it go behind him. They'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. As we check the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it all starts with junior Jake Fromm. His 39th start, 32 and 6 as a starting quarterback. And the rest of the offense with Jake looks like this. Lawrence Cager will keep our eye on him. He warmed up. He is ready to go, we think, but he is suffering with rib and shoulder problems. DeAndre Swift and Jake Fromm start things off in the Georgia backfield. And it's a toss to Swift trying to get to the corner. He's going to get dumped for a big loss on the opening play by Anthony Hines, the outside linebacker. Interesting, that's the same play that Georgia ran to start their series there in a two-minute drill against Auburn when they put a touchdown late. A toss to the outside, they want to get their tackle out wide, and AM handled it really easily. The defensive line, that group, Hines who just made the big play. Buddy Johnson's their leading tackler, and that's the secondary. A loss of eight yards on the opening snap. Demetrius Robertson in motion. Fromm's first throw is complete to the tight end. One of the seniors, Charlie Warner. And Hines again made the stop. It'll bring up third down. And there's Lawrence Cager on the sideline. Didn't take the first snap with the three wide out grouping. So we'll keep an eye on him. He practiced Thursday effectively, but he wore a black shirt all week. Meaning with no contact shirt all week. The shoulder's a problem, but the rib's even worse, especially when you're going across the middle. <laughs> Somebody's trying to take your middle out. That's for sure. Third down and 10. Blitz coming off the corner. Fromm has to get rid of it in a hurry. Lofts it out incomplete. It would have been out of bounds. George Pickens was the intended receiver, and Jake Fromm looks at his gloved hand as if to say, I didn't get quite what I wanted on that football. Aaron Hansford, number 33, came off the edge and really pressured from, had to throw it faster. By the way, Ness, you and I were talking. Have you ever seen him? I don't know if we has with him a glove before. Yeah, J Jamie was talking about it in the open, and uh, we haven't seen him. Now, yet. I watched the Kentucky game last night, and he did not wear a glove in that rainy game. And that was a monsoon game. This one's light rain compared to that one. And I have slipped on the punt return. Georgia's coverage team does a great job. Tyler Simmons, another senior down there, starting wide receiver and also starting on the special teams, along with Campbell, made the stop. 
So AM takes over on offense with the Chick-fil-A starting lineups, and it starts with Kellen Mond, the junior, who is a definite run threat on top of being one of the top throwing quarterbacks. He's number three in the conference in passing yardage and number four in touchdown passes. And this is the group that will start with him. Kirby Smart was really scared about the wide receivers, but Jaden Weidermeyer has become a real weapon at tight end for the Aggies offense as well. They'll start in a three wide receiver set here. Isaiah Spiller gets the handoff in Georgia, much like the Aggies defense. A loss for Monty Rice on the opening tackle. Monty Rice lined up right there, just feels it and gets in there really quickly. Two tackles for a loss for each team. Monty, one of the captains, junior out of Madison, Alabama. And he led the way last week in the winter of Auburn with 10 tackles. That quickness he has, hitting that snap, hitting that hole, what a, a good player he's become. So second down at 13. And going to be second down at 18. Here we go. Last time we were here it was Notre Dame doing that. Remember That's that? That's right. False start after false start in that game. And Hubert Owens signals another one of those. Carson Green, the right tackle, jumped. Here, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely got a good head start. Both teams' offenses on their opening series dig themselves a hole. On the ground, Spiller dumped again. Tyler Clark, the first guy there. And coming from the secondary again in that nickel package, Mark Webb also comes off the corner and gets in there. Attacking defense. Dan Lanning, the new defensive coordinator, first-year defensive coordinator. If you talk to the coaches, the one big difference they feel on first and second down, Georgia is bringing more people than in the past. Third down and 20. And Mond is going to be standing on his own goal line. No opening scores allowed by Georgia this year in the opening possession. And a and just going to play it safe here. A one-yard game for Spiller, maybe, and it's a punting situation for the Aggies. Boy, that was ugly, wasn't it? It was. Trayvon Walker had the sack to end the game last week of Bo Nix at Auburn. Comes up with a tackle, and it's a punting situation for last year's Ray Guy award winner. Got two really good punters here. This one's Braden Mann, but he is deep in his own end zone to take this snap. And First thing you have to do is handle the ball first exactly. before you and kick it. In this weather, a field position game is so important. Two good punters. Let's see how they handle it. He handled the snap well. The punts backs up. Dominic Blaylock to the 35, and he's got a little room to return. Blaylock to midfield. Whoa! Got hammered out of bounds, but he got a good return out of it. George is going to be in Aggie land offensively. Well, we played four ugly minutes of offensive football. Pretty for the defense, though. as we welcome you back to Athens. A scary scene unfolded on the sideline last week at Auburn when Georgia Athletics photographer Chamberlain Smith was struck after a play, knocked unconscious, taken to the hospital with a concussion. I spoke to her yesterday. She's doing better. She said she's grateful for all the people who have checked in on her from around the world. And she shared the photo that she took right before she got hit. She has tremendous skill. And Brad, she's watching her dogs cheering them on from home today. Glad you're doing better, Chamberlain. Glad you're watching. Gary, I knew you wanted to say something. Uh, thanks, Ness. I do. You know, last week in real time, I just didn't see what happened. In fact, I, I might have been the last person to see what happened. That confusion and, and my commentary that followed led some to conclude that I was kind of being insensitive to Chamberlain's serious situation. That certainly wasn't my intent. But I get it. Let it happen, and our viewers saw it. And then simply put, I should have been better. I want to apologize to Chamberlain and our CBS viewers for that. And I'm also thrilled to see that she's going to be back soon and doing well, and uh, that's the best news at all. Absolutely. The Bulldogs right now will try their second offensive series, and they've got a better spot to work from than the first time. 
They open up here at the 47 of Texas A&M. Front on the give, DeAndre Swift, and Swift found a little opening. Buddy Johnson holding on for dear life, but a positive play for Swift. We got it, Nelson. I think that's the key player for this A&M team, Buddy Johnson, the middle linebacker. How many games do we do in modern football now where we say the middle linebacker is the key player? These two teams kind of play the old style of the game. They yeah. want to run between the tackles. You already saw both inside linebackers. Honey Rice now and Buddy Johnson making plays. They have to make a lot of tackles in this game. Buddy made a lot in that Alabama game. Career high 11 in that game we saw him earlier this year. Pick up a five for the Andre Swift. Second and five for the Dogs at the 42. Swift again. Now trying to get to the edge. The Andre Swift ran out of real estate, but he got a first down. I'll tell you, big Andrew Thomas, number 71, the left tackle. Watch him get the edge. He handles it, handles it easily with Leal, the true freshman. He's got a young guy in there, DeMarvin Leal, and he handled it. Swift got 14 and a first down at the 28. Georgia's offensive line, we've spoken so much about them. An average of 328 pounds a man. Demetrius Robinson might have been moving at the snap at the handoffs to Swift for about three. Swift to get the ball here, yeah. Mari Richardson in on the stop. So Georgia's thrown the one pass to Charlie Werner, and it's been ground game time for number seven so far. Yeah, it, it, he had the um, throw to Pickens down the sideline. Oh, that's right, incomplete. Yep. Second and seven. Pickens, who's up to the top of your screen right now, with. Here's the down that Mike Elko, defensive coordinator for AM, needs to win. Second down, because if Georgia gets its short yardage, they're tough to stop. Brian Harrigan in the backfield with Fromm. He'll get the carry this time. Little juke step, puts his head down. Number Got a couple. Brian but third and medium. And that means that if you're trying to call defensive signals for AM, you have no idea what's going to be called. That's the advantage of having this running attack that Kirby has built here with this massive offensive line. Interestingly, third and medium, Elko does come with his nickel package. He's almost daring Georgia to run the ball here. If they run it, it'll be Harrion. If they throw it, it's from. They're already in field goal range, although on a day like this, you never know. From delayed blitz coming. Down the sideline, Harrion can't find it. It was out of bounds anyway. Got him open. Wow, and he had a game, and he had a play. Andre White from 32 was on the opposite side, and he has Harrion. Watch this. They're trying to confuse Georgia, and look at the setup. Had man-to-man -man coverage going the opposite way. They had a big play. Fromm missed him. Yep, Jake knows it. Should have hit him. And it will bring in Rodrigo Blankenship. 41-yard field goal attempt. As I said, these conditions, it's not a chip shot by any stretch. Nor is a 41-yard field goal anyway. But the kick's on the way, and the senior who's been... So brilliant as a Georgia kicker knocks it home. Hot rod. You have to respect the specs. Scores first for Georgia from 41 yards out. Three nothing dogs. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 news network for coverage. It's always focused on the game. You can get nonstop highlights, fantasy advice, and picks. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Don't forget Gary will be along with the HQ guys after our game. It looks like we're streaming Athens right now with the weather the way it is. A 41-yard Rodrigo Blankenship field goal capped a 23-yard drive and six plays for Georgia to put them on the board. I am not familiar of every game that AM played this year. They had rain games, but nobody had a stronger rain game than Georgia this year in that game against Kentucky. Yeah. You got to believe that Georgia's more used to this than AM in this weather. Talking with Kirby yesterday, even though they won that game handily, and he was worried that it would be a day like this, but he was also confident in the fact that they've been through it. Hot rod to kick. I think he feels his team has not played their best game yet this year. Right. This one's 
turnable notes not They'll bring it out to the 25 and now we're going to do project smarter presented by the home depot and what's smarter to do sometimes is to go old school and do something nobody else is doing two backs in the backfield you get different angles of the running backs this has been the changeup that has forced defense a little bit off balance and they've got a good package because they also got a quarterback that can throw it obviously but also run so it's almost a three back set when they go to that split back set Irby was saying earlier this week it's almost like trying to defend the wishbone of the base. And by the way, the tight end gets involved too in the blocking schemes from that H position, not lined up just off the line of scrimmage. Or just shifting on their defensive line. First down, Kevin Mon trying to throw a slant, batted up in the air and knocked down. I think he was lucky it got it knocked down. If that wasn't knocked down, I think J.R. Reed is going to intercept that ball. Sometimes you get a break early in the game, and J.R. Reed thought he had a pick. Watch J.R. read it and get under the slant. Oh, you're right. No and he jumps. Oh! <laughs> I got it. I got it. I, I, know. I don't have it. Oh, he had it. He had it red, and he was ready for it. Thorpe finalist for the top defensive back in the country. He's been a great player for Georgia. 40th straight start. Well, miss talking to him. You're he, not kidding. He's amazing. Spiller. Nothing there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean, this is an offense. They ran for 340 yards last week against a, a good, pretty good South Carolina defense. They're down at 10. With three and out on their first drive, let's see if Georgia can pitch another shutout here. Minus four yards for the Aggies so far. Right now, AM could go split backs, upside down backs. They can't block them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The three wide outs all split to the near side. Georgia just a three man rush. Mond in trouble. Three men's going to be enough. Drop him right near the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be considered a sack by Jermaine Johnson. Um, Jermaine Johnson's job was to cover the quarterback. He was spying, spying on the quarterback. He three-man rush, but watch him play Mond. He stays right there, and he's a position to make that play. God, Dan Lanning and Kirby Smart has their defense dialed in. Don't they, though? Yep. <laughs> And we said coming in, number two in the country in scoring defense, obviously tops in the SEC. And this one yeah. off the side of the foot of one of the best players in the country goes out around the 40, I think 42 maybe. The first one, he kind of outkicked his coverage, and this one he shanks it out of bounds. I'm about seven yards wrong there. I'm <laughs> pretty good to spot that one. J.R. Reed, big part of that last defensive stop for the Dogs. Tomorrow, NFL on CBS features a full slate of games, including an NFC South clash. Jim and Tony and Tracy will be Carolina and New Orleans. Raiders on the road against the Jets. All starts with JB and the guys on the NFL today. Noon Eastern on CBS tomorrow. Yeah, that's kind of how it is here in Athens today. Yeah, and, and considering the Georgia defense and how stout they've been all year, I think the pressure already is on AM's defense to not let this thing get to 10 points. Second straight great field position for this Georgia offense. That punt off the side of Mansfoot went out at the 48 yard line. So the first two possessions are punt after a three and out after a big loss by DeAndre Swift on the opening snap. Demetrius Roberts in the motion man. And it's a flea flicker. Fine loads going deep. Manzer just missed man. Pickens. He did a pull the string on it just a little bit, and it would have been a touchdown. Great position on the field to call this. It's almost like a turnover the punt. Here's Pickens, how he lined up, and you get great field position, running the ball so well, you got him. Safety can't get there, but what? Half a yard, yep. a yard, a bit too long. Pickens laid out, got one hand on it, maybe. And yeah, just the back end of the ball. And he's six foot five and he couldn't reach it. That's two now that absolutely that Jake had put it on at the touchdowns. Draw play to Heron. That'll lose a couple. Third and long. Long. 
Jaden Peavy in on the stop. And remember last time on second down and third down, I believe, AM came with pressure from the edge on Jake Fromm. They must not feel with as good a record, only six sacks all year, stat that that Georgia offensive line has. If they can't put pressure, they got them any other way but to bring extra players. Georgia's offense going the wrong way on this drive, and now a bad snap. Well, Fromm wasn't ready for it, and he has to lay on it at the 30 yard line. I think Jake looked away and Trey Hill let it go. Oh yeah, Jake Fromm was not ready for that, no doubt. He was still pointing out formations or protections, trying to put people in motion. And, uh, you know, that one at home, you might understand if you're on the road right. doing that, but that at home is hard to explain. There's his big 335-pound center, Trey Hill. With the early snap, and that Jake Kamara, special teams player of the week, and he got some sneak for his punting against Auburn, and he a howitzer, fair catch back at the 17. That baby was up there for a while. That was a great stop for that AM defense. That keeps them in the game just three points. This Monday, Cedric the Entertainer and Max Greenfield star in a new neighborhood show that Miss Nancy and I never miss. Monday, starting at 8, 7 Central on CBS. 3-0 Georgia here in the first quarter with 5-17 remaining. And Georgia's dominated in every way, and the Aggies are fortunate it's 3-0. Two previous, worst passes. Previous meetings, this is the sixth overall, but they read the bowl games, non-conference games, first time that the two teams have met as SEC yep. opponents. And it's not going to happen again in College Station until 2024. Maybe, unless the schedulers change the format. <laughs> okay. By the way, every play has been a run or a five-yard pass. A&M needs to loosen up this Georgia defense. Even incomplete down the field would help them. Spiller behind Mond in the pistol set here on first down from the 17. Mond does want to throw downfield. He might not get the chance. Throws late, and he got it to the 40. Jamon Osmond. So just as Gary called it, he hooks up with his number one receiver. Yeah, no doubt the Georgia defensive backs are squatting on the slants. They're playing physical on the corners. And that's actually what Kirby told Ness and I on Friday, that he's nervous about the size of those Aggie receivers. You see the play right there. Osmond 6-2, Kendrick Rogers 6-4. Courtney Davis, 6'2", physical receivers, pickup of 23 on that one after the 40-yard line. Straight handoff to Spiller, a little hesitation, trying to cut it outside. He got to the edge and got about five. We check in with Jamie. Speaking of that powerful group of wide receivers for A&M, they have been without Anaya Smith the majority of that first half of this first quarter, excuse me, checking out that right calf, right knee area. He's also listed as one of their best returners. Courtney Davis has been back there so far today, Brad. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Keep an eye on that for you. Pick up a five. Georgia changed up its defensive lineup. Yeah, bringing in that three-man look with the ability to spy again with Jermaine Johnson. Got Trayvon Walker in there, the freshman on the defensive line again. He made the big play at the end of the Auburn game. Four wide out grouping here. Keeping it on the ground. Spiller goes the same way. This time, not the same result. He lost a yard. Get the feeling that for AM to be able to open up this running attack, they also are going to have to commit to running the quarterback a little bit more. You know, they threw one deep ball, but the regular run plays right now, the Georgia defense too quick for them. Trayvon Walker, the guy just talked about, is the man that made the stop and forces a third down and five. Crowd trying to get into it for the Georgia defense. And Georgia has three true freshmen on the field for them in this package. Bodes well for the future, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I think so. Mon, a hit as he threw, and it's tipped and knocked away. Incomplete. Well, Intended was, for Kendrick Rogers. Yeah. It was a corner blitz coming off the edge again. Both 
coordinators are trying to attack the quarterback with blitzes, and you can see it was missed that time. Spiller went out too fast. He was responsible for the corner cap. Great blitz by Eric Stokes, and that affected that throw for sure because Mon got this right when he let go of the ball. Yep. Nobody tougher than Kellen Mon, though. He That's for to sure. Take some hits, boy. High snap. Punt. He'll bounce down inside the 10. Well, Great fun. roll for the Aggies. Yeah, finally, the field has been flipped for the Aggies. Boy, it's been flipped all the way to the one yard line. That's what you do when you're a good punter. His previous attempt, not so much. That 54 yarder will have Georgia buried at its own one yard line. And from Pylon Cam, here's how it looks as they let it take every revolution to right there, just outside the one. Those guys have been valuable for us this year, the pylon cams, haven't they? sure have. I don't know how we fit our little guys inside there with their cameras. <laughs> we got the smallest <laughs> camera people in the world down in the end zone. So Jake Fromm's got his feet in his own end zone here on the snap. Actually, in the shotgun, will be about five yards in his own end zone. Here comes a blitz from the secondary. Fromm loads it, fires deep sideline, and again, overshot. Pickens, who was looking for a flag and didn't get one. So Jake Fromm has had a couple of opportunities to make big plays. He had Harry at first coming out of the backfield. Could have been a touchdown, and then he had Pickens on the flea flicker. Missed him, and you know what he's done because of that? That's took his glove, glove off. off. Yep. yep. Going without the glove, the heck with that. That lasted not even a half of a... Not even a full quarter of football. Jake is one of five for seven yards, and that was Warner, the tight end, here earlier in the quarter. DeAndre Swift straight up the middle, gave him a little bit of room to work now out around the six. Still going to be third down. Out of BK and on the tackle. Big defensive lineman, 305 pounder. Who creates a lot of havoc on that inside for the Aggie defense? Third down and four. Fromm on a slant and it hit this guy right between the numbers and he dropped it. It was Demetrius Robertson. I thought it was curious. Jackson was a tenner. Robertson. Maybe it was. Yep, yeah, you're right. It was, and yeah, you don't throw him any better than that. And you know what happens is, you watched last week. Auburn had a lot of success with the slam. Yeah, they did. Why don't we do that? <laughs> and they do it, and they drop it. So everybody's three and outing so far. Kamara got a beauty last time, kicking from his own end zone. This one not so good. It'll be returnable from the 45 for Courtney Davis. Davis looking for a block, got to the edge. Courtney Davis all the way down to the Georgia 35. Great punt return, and now the Aggies are in prime real estate on the Georgia end of the field. The results of putting a new rule in, the peelback block. You've got a guy set up for a, a big peelback block, Watch the defender lay off. He skims him. Instead of a knockout block, he skims him. Just as effective and not the potential of an injury. Just kept running right on yep. by. And it was good enough. So now the Aggies in a perfect spot at the Georgia 35-yard line to open this drive with 146 left first quarter. Georgia's highly talented defense are going to have their hands for preventing any kind of score here. Mond off the play fake. Throws out completes. And that one's to Osmond again. Interesting, we were talking on Friday to James Coley, the offensive coordinator, first-year offensive coordinator, was here before for Georgia. He coached for four years, three years the offensive coordinator with Jimbo at Florida State. Yep. And he said the biggest difference in this league to him, yeah, a lot of big guys up front, but he thinks it's way more physical with the corners on the receivers. And the young players are not used to that, especially his young, tall guys. Second and five, just outside the Georgia 30. Blitz coming off the corner, pass complete. And it's going to be short of the first down to Courtney Davis. 
think that was J.R. Reed on the blitz, wasn't it? Well, I tell you, that was great defense, though, by Tyson Campbell out there by himself. He knew he had help from behind him, but he played off the back block and then ended up making the tackle. It's funny, we were talking to Jr. yesterday. He said, do you think it'll be emotional for you or your cry for senior day? He said, no, but my mom already started this morning. Yes. So she got a whole day of crying in for him. And, of course, his dad, Jake, a great receiver in the NFL for a long time, mostly with the Vikings. Third and three. 0 for 3 today. Time, time out in. Clock, play clock was running down. They wanted to get out of it. And so we'll take it with them with just 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter that has only a field goal to show for it so far. It'll make you question everything you believe. The critically acclaimed series Evil Thursday at 10, 9 Central on CBS. Third down has been evil today so far in Athens. It has, quarter. but on this one, if I'm Georgia, I'm thinking that the Aggies are going to have two downs to get it. I don't think they're going to try a field goal from this far away. They're not going to punt. If it was me, I'd think about finally di dialing up the quarterback line right here. Third and three, following the timeout. Three tight ends on the field. Including Baldry, who's in the backfield with Kalamon. Play action wide open. Here's Baldry, and he's got the first down at the quarter. That is so old school right there. We used to call it 626, fullback flat. Baldry is the fullback on this play, even though he's in an H position. He ends up being the fullback. You're running off tackle. Got the tight ends right there and slip them right back by the end man of the line of scrimmage. Giving the fullback some sugar and a first down. His first catch of the year. Are you ready for that? <laughs> Brings the quarter to an end. AM threatening, though. Fourth ranked Georgia has their hands full against the Aggies, leading just 3 0. Set to start the second quarter of the Home Depot SEC on CBS in Athens, Dooley Field. Rain hasn't really affected the size of the crowd too much. I think the park is probably pretty big, but we haven't had a lot of offense in the first down. A&M's got two first downs. Georgia has one through the first 15 minutes. Aggies with one of those first downs at the Georgia 20 to open up the second quarter. Kellen Mon to throw, lobs it over the middle, broken up, incomplete. Richard LeCount got a hand on it. Well, there's a lot of good senior duos in college football, but it'd be hard pressed to find a better duo than Richard LeCount, number two, and J.R. Reed. LeCount is coming on. He's got great speed, making plays all over the field. And J.R. Reed, as Ness just talked about it before, the veteran out there. Yep. And there you see the rain intensifying a little bit. Hardest all day, I think, right now. Ball security on a day like this is big. Both backs are in there that Gary talked about. That full house backfield. With Mond between Richardson and Spiller. And he's going to run it here. Kellen Mond, great wheels for a quarterback. Got five. LeCount in on the stop along with Monty Rice. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to need to open the game up. But uh, number two, the safety. Reads it fast and gets up there and stops. Kellen Mond quickly, and I thought Kellen Mond kind of was shaking his head. Kellen was a little bit after that hit. It looked like LeCount got him around the helmet. It looked like he was just uh, shaking up. It might have been rain, and he was shaking up. <laughs> Georgia's defense, top five in just about everything, including the red zone, as you saw there. Third down and five. You know, one of the storylines last week, no matter that AM rushed for over 300 yards against South Carolina, South Carolina held him to four field goals. That's why it remained a game. Get the playoff in time. So it's going to be third and ten. The left game. Offense, number 11. Five yard penalty. Third down. Right. And you know what? Last time, Jimbo took the timeout on the play. When the play clock started going down, he saved his quarterback. This time it looked like he trusted him. 
He said, you know, you're a veteran quarterback. You're not going to make that mistake. That's why he was so upset with yeah. that big play. And it's become a bigger play now. Third down and ten. One third down conversion between the two teams so far. for Georgia Mon double clutches goes down the middle and completes intended for his tight end I thought he fell down on the play Weidermeyer did after he released the ball Weidermeyer tried to get to the middle of the field I, it appeared out of the side of my eye that he slipped on the play he's going to try to come in look from the right side of your screen and he's going to try to yep, get into the end he did fell down on the play so that'll bring on Seth Small, who's 15 of 20 on the year. Braden made the hold. It'll be a 37 yard attempt to try to tie the game. And he tucked it in the right uprights. So we're even now with 13 29. Remaining first half. The Aggies with the field goal. Even things off with the fourth ranked Bulldogs. College football continues tonight on CBS Sports Network. The Miami Hurricanes take on FIU from Marlins Park at 7, followed by Boise State at Utah State at 10.30 on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. When you talk about the group of five schools, that's how big it is for Boise State against Utah State tonight. So they've got some Aggies on their hands. There's all the teams that are 9-1. and one. And Georgia's got some Aggies on their hands here in Aspen. This is high game at 3. Samir White, Brian Harry waiting on the 45 yard line so there's one of the 24 seniors today a 40 yard kick return for Brian Harriet he's one of those forgotten men who now no longer is overlooked he's just too good of a football player and as told you in the open and when it's senior day he catches the ball he blocks uh, he does it all he's just a really well rounded football player and a touchdown catch last week in the win over Auburn and he sets George's offense up in great shape at their own 46. And AM has stopped number seven, Swift. You know, five, he's only got, he just have not been able to establish DeAndre Swift. Turn that out of there. <laughs> DeAndre goes out for about he's the guy. 16. He, he's the guy. You he know, really is. conditions like this as we welcome you back to the booth, uh, it's going to be number seven. It's going to be his kind of game. I think so. Right now, from struggling with the passing game, missed a couple of easy ones then, had one drop, one for seven. He was, I think he was nine for 12 in the rain against Kentucky, right. but not a lot of yards. So it seems so far that Fromm is not handling the weather. Let's see if he can get it going. He doesn't need too many completions for touchdowns. A kid in 13 completions for three scores last week and here's Swift off the left side got some good blocks and positive yardage again DeAndre back to back thousand yard plus seasons it's funny every time you talk about a coach you know for two years now and there's been a lot of good backs here at Georgia anytime you talk about Georgia's offense they always go to Swift he's the guy that can change the game quickly 39 yards on his seven carry so far he'll get a breather and a quick sip over there on the sideline and Perry who had the great kick return with Jake Fromm on the Georgia backfield and Brian will get the carry only about a yard you know, Ness, I was out at practice Thursday, and George Pickens was really coming on the freshman receiver. But early in the year, he was guilty of Odell Beckham Jr. disease. <laughs> and Kirby was coaching him hard. And you know what? In the same game, it paid off. He used two hands. They've been really coaching him. I think he's really coming on. He had a great practice on Thursday. He's the difference maker. Seems like a big play waiting to happen. He it does. just happens. And Jake missed him earlier in the game. From back to throw here. Scans the field, has all day. He yeah. missed, again. missed Demetrius Robertson yeah. by a mile. He did. Jake Fromm struggling right now. It, it is raining, and it's raining hard, but it's not really windy. I actually thought both quarterbacks would be able to handle it better. So fourth down. And Georgia going for it. Yep. Two out of six on the year. Too far for a field goal, too close for a punt. And Fromm under center. More pressure. Now he gets 
Pierre's Jackson in tighter on the left side. They double ship both times. They try to draw the off sides. It's and not then, working. And then call a time. Well, caused AM to take a timeout. Well, you know what? And interestingly, Kirby was running up to call a timeout. Well, he got a freebie then. That's right. <laughs> 11.41 remaining in the half. Georgia, will they go for four down? When we come back, we'll see. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper SEC conference standings. Georgia has already clinched their third straight Eastern crown. They'll be playing the first week of December in Atlanta. It looks like against LSU, but we still got some football left. Well, Georgia's changed his mind. They're going to give Rodrigo Blankenship a crack at yeah. the field goal here. Maybe they did. Maybe they were going to just try to draw him off sides for the first down and kick the field goal anyway. I think Jimbo's faster than Kirby right now to the, the <laughs> official call and timeout. Now well, Rodrigo's one for one today from 41. And his I, longest this year is 50. And the wind is left to right. He's got the wind behind him. He'll try this one from 49 to try to give Georgia the lead back. Maybe the most popular kicker in college football. As we said earlier, he gets the biggest ovation from the crowd here in Athens every time his name's announced. And he might get some more cheers here. That makes it, and it does. Kind of a knuckleball, but I think he'll take it. Rodrigo Blankenship from 49. 6 3, Georgia. Starting to look like the Kentucky game a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I think we should go down to Jamie. It doesn't look that bad from up here. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you where I am right now. I'm hiding under a tent because of what you're showing on the screen right now. Holy I am soaked because so I can only imagine what Hot Rod feels like. Like a chip who hit the field goal. 411 points now as he kicks off. And it'll be at the 25 yard line for Texas A&M. Yeah, they love Hot Rod here. You have to respect the specs, is what they say. He's up for the Groza Award. He's a finalist for the Burlesworth Award, which is the best former walk-on in college football. And he's a Campbell finalist, which is community service, academics, and all of that. The kid's uh, widely popular in this part of the country. And, of course, Burlesworth had the specs, too. That's right. right? There's the walk-on. <laughs> He's the difference so far. 6-3. Well, Jimbo's got to find some easy throws. They're not able to move that defensive line for Georgia at all with the run game. He's got to find some offense on the edges, I think, with his tight ends, the quarterback run game. Where can he find some offense? On the ground is Spiller. Yeah, not there. Uh-uh. <laughs> And that was whistled dead, I think, before the snap now. Another delay of game, and you're going to see why they may be delaying. They're trying to figure out where all these studs are on this Georgia defensive line. The first one was by Tyler Clark. This time in the middle, Devontae Wyatt, and a comeback. You do it with strength, quickness, and a veteran play cutting off that backside blocker to make the play. That defensive line is dominating the game right now. First and 15 after the penalty. Here's a trap to Spiller trying to get to the outside, and DJ Daniel not going to let him get there. And this is how you play defense. Daniel makes the tackle, but watch Monty Rice push it outside. Rice is going to get there and force the runner to go one hole wider than he wanted to. Take on two blockers and then allow his teammate to make the play. He eats two blockers. You know you're doing your job. Yeah. See Monty Rice calling the defense, shifting his defensive front from his linebacker position on second and 13. Mon getting some pressure and down he goes. Big Jordan Davis. <laughs> and that's what you call a bull rush right there. Bull rush it right up there. Just keep pushing. 330 pounds of bullying. Yeah, absolutely. Right in the middle. Just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And Mon runs right into a wall. 
First solo sack for the big guy this year. And it puts AM in a really tough third down spot. Third and 19. Yeah, potential uh, make a mistake spot if you're a, a, a offense in this situation. And with that in mind, they'll just keep yep. it on the ground and punt it. It's no exact, game. Exactly. They don't want to take, make a bad play in the rain and make a mistake and end the game early. That nickel package and nowhere to run. Jermaine Johnson and Nicobe Dean, a true freshman outside linebacker, combine on a hit. That's what happens when you have five, what, four or five straight recruiting classes in the top ten. Yep. You got a lot of guys. Dominic Blaylock waits on the punt. High snap handled. Blaylock will take the fair catch at about the 35-yard line. And that's where the Georgia offense that has sputtered today will take over. Senior day today. Rodrigo Blankenship, the two field goals today in his senior outing has the Bulldogs in front 6-3. Let's test your knowledge with today's AFLAC trivia question. Which is, what SEC schools have won three or more straight division titles and who were their head coaches? Well, I think we know who one of them is. Yes, if you were paying we attention do. to my <laughs> SEC East standings. That's over. right. I'll give you the answer a little bit later on. Sanford Stadium looks like a gigantic funnel right now. And August says, I'm getting as far back in this doghouse as possible. Not crazy about the rain. <laughs> Ugga 10. So what can get this offense going for Georgia? Well, maybe number 11, but so far one for seven, four, seven for Jake. The gloves back on. And a first down for the dogs at the 35 yard line. Hand off. DeAndre Swift got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. You know, and, and that's the challenge for James Coley, the offensive coordinator for Georgia right now. He's got a quarterback that's a little off, and the skill, as you look at James right there on the air and right next to you right here, is you're not just calling plays. You've got a sense that your quarterback is struggling, so you've got to help him out. Give him a couple easy throws so he can gain his confidence back right now. And they change up the receiving core as Pickens comes out. Three wide outs to the near side. And again, to give to Swift. Looking for blockers. Try to hurdle, and that didn't work. And that's back to back. Big time plays from the secondary. Leon O'Neill that time. Yeah, and we asked defensive coordinator Mike Elko if you could pick one guy out to have a big game. Who do you say it has? Leon O'Neill. Yep. Number nine. He said he's the guy that has to recognize pass, run quickly, and get up there. From back shoulder throw. There. One to Tyler Simmons. First down. Finally, something clicked for Jake Fromm. Miles Jones in coverage, number 10 for AM. Underthrown ball, but there's nobody in college football that likes throwing the ball outside the numbers more than Jake Fromm. 27 yard pickup. Biggest play of the day so far for the Georgia offense. To the 37 of AM. Play action, and now Fromm's going the other way. And that is caught as well. Kiaris Jackson, same kind of play, only to the right instead of the left. So we talked about what James Coley could do to get his quarterback going. Now, so you were talking about this when Fromm was throwing balls. Does anybody throw the ball to the outside loves, better than him? He loves outside the hashes out there. And I think Coley knew that. He dialed up a couple of comfortable throws for his quarterback. And now you got to believe Jake is in gear. Pickups are 27 and 22. Georgia in the red zone leading the country. 98%. That is 39 out of 40 trips in there to get points. Wrong way for Zamir White. And Jake Fromm has to eat that one. Yeah. Zamir White shifted over just before the snap. And you don't know if he was supposed to or not. But watch Zamir White shift. And then Fromm thinks he's to his right. But he was not. No. And Zeus disappeared on Jake. And Jake yeah. had to carry that one himself. And White goes out. James Cook comes in to the Georgia backfield. So back to back big throws and a loss on that carry by Fromm. Makes it second down and 11. 
Here is Jackson in motion toward the ball. From the throw, looking left. And now comes back to the right with a wobbler intended for Wolf incomplete. The crowd reacted because James Cook was open early and Jake Fromm did not see it. For a, you know, a second down throw, he had an easy throw to the outside and Jake just did not see it. His eyes were looking at something else. See, see Cook right there? Yep. He's got a good eight, ten yards on the play. Instead, it brings up third and long. DeAndre Swift back in. And a four receiver group, including Pickens, the freshman, down to the bottom of your screen. From throws quickly, throws perfect to Pickens. Touchdown, Georgia. You know there's a connection. If you practice well, you'll usually play well. And Pickles was on fire on Thursday on the practice field. Watch him beat Renfro at the Linus. He actually grabbed Renfro and threw him down. That's why Dibion Renfro was upset. Right at the line of scrimmage, he grabbed him and kind of went by him. So Pickens with his fifth touchdown catch of the year and Blankenship for the point after. And good. Georgia pads its lead with 644 remaining in the first half. Right again, right at the beginning of the play. Watch Pickens grab, grab Renfro and pull him down with the face mask. That's what got the separation. Now watch Renfro turn around and go, come on. The guy's 6'6", six, six, and he can do that. No way I could cover him. Jake Fromm finally warms up for Georgia. 65-yard drive and seven plays. Most of it from the capper was to Pickens. 13-3. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Rick BJ and I get you caught up on today's action, including a game to a watch from the sideline. Mac Jones, 275 yards passing and three touchdowns in the tune-up for the Iron Bowl to his brother Talia. Also threw a touchdown in the win over Western Carolina. Back to Athens. All right, Zuck, thanks. A touchdown pass from Jake Fromm who at one point was one for seven for seven yards, but Jake on that last drive for Georgia, three out of four, 65 yards, yeah. and the scoring touch. And, to and that's the sign of a good offensive coordinator. Know a guy that's struggling, nobody likes to do and let him do it. It's almost like basketball. Run a play for a guy. Yeah. No, run a play for a guy. That's right. And the Aggies will take over at the 25 again. A little while ago, we asked you the AFLAC trivia question as we tested your knowledge. Let's see what you've come up with. And it was three or more straight division titles in the East. Who were the head coaches? The head ball coach, Steve Spurrier, did it in Florida. Gene Stallings at Alabama. Nick Saban at Alabama. And now Kirby Smarts here at Georgia. I may have said three straight East crowns, three straight division crowns, whether East or West. It's a good group. The sun, I think, yes, is trying. Right that's now. what that is. That's crazy. Everybody's cheering it, too. And then the full house backfield for the Aggies. Mara clapping for it, asking for it, running with it, yes. going nowhere. Devontae Wyatt again on the stop. Well, no one has been able to uh, run effectively, effectively against this Georgia defense. The thought was, as well as A&M's been running it, they would give them a big challenge. So far, nothing. Georgia nothing. came in ranks number one in the conference, number three in the country, and allowing only 76 yards a game on the ground. And, of course, last week they gave up their first rushing touchdown, and that was Bo Nix, the quarterback for Auburn. Second down and ten. Kellen Mond throws it out in the flat to Spiller. And Spiller wrapped up. Nice job defensively by Devon Wilson as we get a Papa John's update in New York. Here's a Ness, it's the game between Harvard and Yale. And after a long delay doing an on-field demonstration out of halftime, Yale erasing a 19-point second-half deficit. They force OT. Zane Dudek gives them the go-ahead lead. And then they get the stop on Harvard to tie for the Ivy League title. How about it? Send some of those points our way, will you? <laughs> well, with the sun here now, we may be seeing a little bit more of a passing game. 
They're down at 10. I mean, does AM have any other choice right now? I don't think so. The tight end Weidermeyer is on the left side, but he's backpedaling to help protect his quarterback and Mon deep middle missed Kendrick Rogers incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. Here's what's hurting the passing game for AM. Jalen Weidemeyer on the left side, number 85, stays in to chip to help. They can't get the pass rushers blocked. So really, they're not using five receivers. They're not using four. They're only using three yeah, guys to go out. One of their big weapons, and you're not going to be a weapon when you're chipping and not getting out. They come after the putter a little bit that time. Fielded at the 38-yard line by Dominic Blaylock. Now well, coming up, Adam, Rick, and BJ will have first half analysis, scores, and highlights on the Geico Halftime Report, which is just over five minutes from now. And there you see the sun-drenched upper deck now of Sanford Stadium. Those people are going, we get to dry out right now. Yeah. This is awesome. I remember a month and a half ago, everybody did not want to be in the sun. <laughs> remember true. that, those hot days? <laughs> now we, they're like, I want to be in the sun. We were asking for the fans up here. Yes. Now we're looking for umbrellas. So now do you start to ride Jake Fom again? Because he has a hot hand. He's going to toss to Andre Swift. DeAndre Swift into the second level and the third as well down to the 40 yard line for years and years and years georgia ran the toss sweep this is the modern version of the toss sweep from the shotgun position get it out of your hand get your tackle to the edge and get your best back in space and he's their best back i mentioned over a thousand yards last year and this year in the company he joins that's a good group friends yes herschel nick no sean sully michelle and deandre swift and that's the one that freeze frame right there you send to all the next recruits that want to come <laughs> be running back right they fake it to him here and farm loads it goes oh Demetrius Robertson got a hand on it, but not two hands, incomplete. Yeah, I, I'm kind of confused why he did not go up with two hands, to tell you the truth. He knew he was going to hit hit. He could feel the safety coming. Goes clear across the field. Accelerates. Boy, boy that's when you go out your receiver to lay out for and go with two hands. And he'll come out. Here as Jackson goes in. Second and ten for Georgia at the Aggie 39. DeAndre Swift Oof. put his head down into Leon O'Neal, and those guys come up smiling at each other. Watch left tackle number 71, Andrew Thomas, again get the edge block. Skips outside, seals the defender number eight, Liel, and get the corner. One of the best in the country, a mid-season oh, All-American. Got somebody down in the backfield. And that brings the proverbial booze. When people think that uh, the defense is taking a breather just to slow down the progress. Neal, number nine is the guy that went down. He was on the tackle I on the play. I don't blame. I would have stayed down right there if I was him. But. Yeah, but he gets up. Seems okay. Smiles at DeAndre yep. Swift. And then gets back to his position and goes down. And they help him up. We'll be right back. <laughs> Leon O'Neill trying to jog it off whatever it was on the sideline for the Aggies while the Georgia Bulldogs had a third down and seven. At the Aggies 36. Jake Fromm throws incomplete. Intended for Dominic Blaylock. Good coverage out there on the corner. Yeah, Charles Oliver did a good job. He's their nickel back coming on, plays a lot of corner, but is earning his time inside. This is a big stop for the Sayan. Staying in the game right now. They're reeling on offense, but can they stay in the game? They start the second half with the ball. And Georgia's got its offense. Now they're gonna no, punt. They're gonna punt. And I'd be thinking, I'd be watching for a, a fake here. A&M did not even put a player back. They're yeah. playing defense safe. And Kamara will punt it. Pops it up in the air and hopes to drop it inside the five. And did they get there? I think they did. 
And the officials got to make that call whether it's at the one yard line, the back judge, and they're both going to have a little so conversation. AM played it so safe, and with Georgia having three timeouts, there's a good chance the way the things have been going that Georgia's going to get this ball back with opportunity to put more points on the board like they did to Auburn last week at the end of the first half. Nicobe Dean, I think, is the guy that got the hand up oh, right there. Covered at the nine yard line, down to the nine yard line by the kicking team. It'll be first and ten from the nine yard line, Texas a &M. Great yeah. play by Dean, the freshman linebacker on the special teams, yeah. but he popped it out all the way almost to the ten. Yep, not where you touch it, where it ends up. First down at the nine. With 319 remaining in the half. The Aggies looking for some kind of offense here before the break. Georgia comes with a blitz. Kellen hangs in, throws over the middle, completes. And it's a nine-yard pickup to Courtney Davis. Don't you get the feeling that Jimbo thought the same thing? We we got to make a couple first downs yeah. because if we give them back the ball, they're going to be in scoring position. That's about the first time that I thought Kellen Mann had good, solid protection, and he got it because he threw on first down. Second down at a yard. Can do anything on this play. It's Spiller that's whip out in the backfield. And he'll get the carry and the first down up to the 20. Malik Herring and Aziz Ajilari in on the stop for Georgia. So right now with the important receiver for AM getting blanked, Jalen Weidemeyer, their impressive true freshman tight end, having no catches. And when you think about it, remember how Cole Clement from Notre Dame, he had nine catches, Kyle Pitts for Florida. I thought he'd have a big game. So did I. That's why we highlighted him in the open. <laughs> <laughs> First down. Just over two to go in the second quarter. And Mon firing again. Complete again. Out to the 25. Pick up a four or five on the play. Jamon Osmond, leading receiver for the Aggies. So we said that Georgia has not played a veteran quarterback with this much skill all year. The best quarterback they probably played all year. But 99% chance they're going to see a better one in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, that'll be Joe Burrow. Second and five. Mon, quick throw, completes, and it's first down. Javon Osmond again. You know, Jimbo has had and a lot of good quarterbacks as you watch the quick out, go trips right there, run the outs, double out to the outside, you pick which guy you want, you make the completion. He's had a lot of good ones, but Jimbo is raving about Kellen Mond to anyone who asks him about it. Here he is again, the throw, and this one is right on target. On the run, Courtney Davis into Georgia territory. Can't throw it any better than that. Jimbo said, I'm so happy with them, it's ridiculous. And Jimbo has coached a lot of quarterbacks. Can't throw it any better than that. So the biggest play there, 24 yards, as the Aggies in Georgia territory. Trying to get some points here in the last 50 seconds. Georgia Six. comes with a blitz. Mon lobs it. Spiller trying to make the catch incomplete. Broken up by Nolan Smith, another freshman linebacker. Here's some of those guys that Gary was talking about that Jimbo's coach at the quarterback position. Yeah, they've had a lot of good ones and guys that have gone on to play in the NFL. First round picks, Jamarcus Russell, Christian Ponder, E.J. Manuel, Jameis Winston all win in the first round, so he knows what he's talking about. Jameis will be playing downtown Atlanta tomorrow afternoon about a 70 minute ride from here. If the Bucks take on the Falcons. And the one name you didn't might not reckon, Matt Mock won the national championship That's right. with that guy. Second and ten. Mon hit from behind as he throws incomplete, intended for Kendrick Rogers. But it was Nolan Smith again. Yeah, one how of those about this guy? The true freshman, he's in coverage the play before. Now they ask him to rush on the outside edge, and he comes and gets in on the quarterback. 
How about that? That's why they name him a five star and why he's on the field almost all of the football game. And the Kobe Dean, the other freshman linebacker, won the high school Butkus Award last year. So those are two of the most highly recruited linebackers yeah. in the country last year. I, I, rumors correct. Uh, Kirby's having some recruiting classes here. Yeah. Hubert Owens with the call. Pass interference on the offense. Number 13, 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. It's on Kendrick Rogers. Yeah, if the ball would have been better thrown, Kendrick Rogers goes down in collisions. He's the wide receiver to the field and watch him run right over. Stokes. <laughs> I think that's a pretty obvious call. Yeah, I think so too. They might let him play in this league, but that's <laughs> not that way. Too much. Yeah, not that way. Hit him so hard he had to go out of the game. Caleb Chapman comes in to take his spot in the game on second and 25 now as the Aggies are going the wrong direction. Trying to get points here before the break. On looking right the whole way. Goes that way and sailed one intended for Osmond, I guess, incomplete. But they accomplished a lot. They got out of the half. They had a chance to put some points on the board, but the pass interference nullified that. But with 32 seconds to go here, they're going to get out of this half, barring a disaster here at the end. Barring a punt return, maybe, yes. or a touchdown. Or an interception or, you know, something like that. It would have to be a disaster. And third and 25, the last time they had a situation like this, they played it safe and just gave it to Spiller and then worried about punting. I would throw one real deep if I was calling plays. Why not see what I could get way down the field? Whoa, there's the disaster, maybe. Mon got back on it, though. And, and Georgia takes a smart timeout. Kirby does. No pun intended. Yes. On the smart timeout. So both quarterbacks have had one of these, and that's uh, a drop ball. And very fortunate he got on that one. That was a tough recovery. And now they've got a punt. And they do have a great punter, but he's had one block this year. Great man has. And remember, what, we have 49-yard field goal already in the football game? Yep. And it's a drier field right now than it was when Rodrigo Blankenship hit that field goal. So last time they put a little pressure on man. Let's see if they got the return on. And then they came close. They're shifting around. Blaylock is the guy that's waiting on it back inside his own 30. And this is a knuckleball. It takes a weird bounce around the 40. Turn, and turned out fine. Down to the 34-yard line, somewhere in there. But there's 14 seconds left right now. And it could be a couple of plays as we check in with Jamie. Brad, you know what's ironic about the seniors saying they wanted to keep their emotions in check today is that their head coach literally never does that. Kirby said, that's who I am. I'm never going to change unless it detracts from my players. But the players love it. They know his passion comes from a good place. But as hard as he coaches them, they have an offseason suggestion, which is to work on his dance. <laughs> yeah, we asked Jake Reed and some of the guys yesterday, what do you think about his dancing? And before I even got the question out, Jake said awful. awful. Or did you say terrible? One of yeah. the two. Fromm's in the gun at the 34-yard line. Will they give him a couple of shots, or will it be DeAndre Swift? Need about 35 yards. They got two timeouts. It'll be a DeAndre Swift. He can get you big yardage, too, if he can get into the secondary. Got only to the 39-yard line. And that should... Oh, oh. They took a timeout. They took another one. Yep. Well, if he throws a back shoulder down there someplace, <laughs> it might be enough time for a blanket ship. Yep. Play with a, a deep ball here would take, you know, maybe seven, eight seconds. They might have a second left. Now remember, when they got their touchdown drive, at one point when Jake was one out of seven, it looked pretty bleak. And then he went three out of four with this one to Simmons one way. Kiaris Jackson the other way on the back shoulder. And then the capper to the freshman pickings for the touchdown. So. Needs one good one like that to get his field goal kicker in range. Yep. About 29, 30 yards to get in range. Maybe a little less. 25 to 30 yards. Gonna have Pickens, Demetrius Robertson, and Kiaris Jackson I, as his wide receivers. I, I think it's doable. I think you could run a 25-yard play and still have a second left. Got Charlie Warner in there, too. The tight end slotted to the left side. Drop play. Swift. 
that will do it for the first half. Georgia at home trying to go to 10 and 1. They're halfway there and a 10 point lead. It's the end of the first half. Georgia 13 to 3 for Jamie's halftime interview with Kirby Smart. Go to Twitter at SEC on CBS. And at halftime from rainy Athens, sun's trying right now as we head to Adam Zucker and the guys in our New York studio. Zuck. All right, Ness, hopefully the uh, rain is over. And coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick, BJ, and I will get you caught up on a big day for Justin Fields and the Buckeyes in a battle of top 10 teams in Columbus after this word from your local station. Just about set to start the third quarter in Athens. You don't have to adjust your set. That's what they do with the lighting system here right before the kickoff to start the second half. And if this was a beauty contest, nobody would win at this point. Well, I would vote for the defensive line for Georgia okay. if there was a beauty contest because they're owning the game right now. Aggies will get the ball to start the second half. with the kick and from the goal line Jalen Preston Preston coming right at you but not getting to the 15 yard line good coverage by the Georgia special teams again so again a little bit of a hole for right. Texas A&M and Gary they got nine yards rushing in the first half they got 91 total yards something's going to have to start to click I realize Georgia's got a really good defense but the Aggies have got to do better than they this. just can't run the ball actually they have minus nine yards rushing in this game and one sack for five yards and and they just can't run the ball they're right. not going to win the Georgia front has just been the story of this football game when we talked to the Georgia seniors yesterday including J.R. Reed he said we don't care it's just to steal a line from Al Davis just win baby yeah, see. well Georgia's halfway there and a 10-point lead they can smell that game in Atlanta they want a shot at LSU number 14 Mond he's gonna tuck it and run with it and he got out across the 20 around the 22 yard line Jamie Gary, you just popped Jimbo Fisher's thought bubble and it went right out onto the air. Minus nine net rushing yards. Unacceptable for Texas A&M in the first half. Now that it's done raining, he said the offensive line could stick their feet in the ground and buy more time for Kellen Mond, create more lanes for their running backs. He said in order to get anything going, the ground game has to go. Let's see if it does. He's got both backs in there with him. Spiller and Richardson. And this is Spiller behind a Richardson block. And he broke the first tackle, not the second, but he did get close to the first down. First half trends. Jake Fromm was one out of seven, and then he hit three out of four on the touchdown drive, but he's hit four different receiver. Kellen Mond sacked once, as Gary said, 82 yards passing, and the rushing yardage. I didn't see the minus in front of the nine, so <laughs> Gary corrected yeah. me. Minus nine. A, I, a &M fans don't want to see that. Yeah, either. that's true. Third and one here. Do they even believe they can gain a yard? In the shotgun. They were in that formation. They ran the fullback out for the short pass before. That was Baldry. Oh, and there's motion by Two Spiller. Give the crowd that one. A little bit too noisy. Kellen Mann was close to the ball. Offense, number 85, five-yard penalty. Third down. And they call it on the tight end. They could have just as easily called it on Spiller in the back. Absolutely. Mon was calling for the ball that time. It could not get Prater to look back and get it. He clapped a couple times and couldn't get it off. That's a fifth Aggie penalty. Georgia has not been penalized today. Now they're going to see the rush package. Trayvon Walker's in the game. Number 44. Ojalari, number 13, comes off the edge right here. They do a lot of different things with this hybrid look. And here they come with their stunts up front. Mond has to get rid of it in a hurry. Got it to the tight end. LeCount not going to stop him from getting the first down. And the ball comes out at the end, and LeCount's got it. I don't know if it was blown dead or not, but Georgia's got the football right now. It's Georgia ball. Gary said the ball hawk and he never gave up on this did he? He didn't and Weidermeyer is trying to get that first down he continues to fight and fight and fight and they let him go through with it and then right at the end the ball pops loose. I really think that's a good play. 
he did not lose his forward progress. He kept moving on the play, and I think they let it go. That dynamic duel in the secondary. It was Absolutely. Reed that hit him from behind, and LeCount, his running mate at safety, well, did you with see the recovery. How, how fast LeCount closed on the play. Now, that was a big man he was trying to bring down, but those two guys are as good as anybody in football. So a golden opportunity for the Georgia offense as it's spike squad time for Richard LeCount. And it's maybe scoring opportunity time for the Georgia offense. First down at the 21 following the turnover. They toss it on an end around Kiaris Jackson. They only got a yard. Great job by Leon O'Neill. Another big play. Here's seeing some nice safety play right now. Leon O'Neill followed up exactly one play later after J.R. Reed and LeCount did their job. Looked like there was space, and all of a sudden there wasn't. That was a nifty little play. They faked the toss sweep and then just the little shovel on the end around, but it only got a yard. And now you got to worry about the big receivers for Georgia to the outside, bottom of the screen. George Pickens, tough matchup. Jake Fromm looked at Swift, looks back in the middle of the field, going to have to get rid of it. Finally does to the end zone. Did he make the catch? He's out of bounds. It was Robertson. Very close, and he's looking at the divot and yeah, telling the field judge, I saying, think I, I was in. I dragged my foot, he's saying, take a look. Ooh, yep. closer than I thought Absolutely. it was. Absolutely. Pylon Cam says, uh, I don't think it was there yet. No, his foot came up when he made the catch. Heck of an effort. Boy, how skilled is that? He knew it was going to come late. He had to drag his foot, but when he secures it, his left foot's off the ground. So back it up to third and nine, just outside the 20. From goes the other way, and the flag down might have a holding on the Aggies. It was thrown in a weird spot. The penalty flag. There's actually three flags. Holding offense. Number 55, penalty is refused, fourth down. Ray Hill, the center, with the holding call. So it's steady. That's the respect he has for Blankenship, the, the field goal kicker for Georgia. You might think you'd want to, you know, move a guy back, a weak kicker, but in this situation, he wants to get him off the field. There you see Trey Hill holding Buddy Johnson. So now it's going to be a field goal attempt of... 37 yards for Blankenship, who's two for two on the day. The senior out of Marietta, Georgia, to try to tack three more. Kick on the way. It's good. So Hot Rod's got a hot foot so far. His nine points. A big difference in the ball game right now. It's 16 to three. Amazon Music brings you today's scholar athletes, Ryan Rennick, uh, mathematical science major, and Andrew Thomas from Georgia, the big left tackle, sports management major. Amazon Music showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to Texas A&M and Georgia's General Scholarship Fund. Okay, so if you're Jimbo Fisher calling plays, I get here at halftime and say they got to run the ball. Jimbo tells Jamie, we got to run the ball. <laughs> you bang your head into that wall. Do you continue to try to run the ball? It's going to get too late for you. Exactly. Here's an onside kick by Georgia. And they are going to get it, I think. Overran it. I think he overran it. Unpiling bodies, Aggies have it. Georgia should have had it. It was Tyson Campbell, I believe, number three was the guy who had it. He slipped a little bit on the turf yes. over there, but it was a perfect kick. Perfect. And the way it died, what a great call right there by Kirby. It's a wet field, so it flops. The ball just stays right there. Watch it. It just hits the wet and overrun by oh. Tyson Campbell. Holy cow. That was wide open for number three, but he just couldn't find the handle on the wet ball. And the pileup has Texas A&M on the bottom with the recovery. Luckily for them. And Rodrigo's going, I can't kick it any better than that. By the way, he just set a school record for the most points in a career with that last field goal, 415 points, and that's second in SEC history for Daniel Carlson of uh, Auburn. Mon. First down, the throw is complete, and 
Rockets. Jamon Osmond again. The defense kept AM in the game. They had to get a stop there. So now it's a 13 point game. One touchdown, and Georgia starts to feel the pressure. Yep. But right now, AM has not shown they can even threaten for a touchdown. Remember, they came in having won four straight and five of their last six. And as Gary mentioned before, had a huge game on the ground a week ago in the win over South Carolina. Today is nothing on the ground against this Georgia defense. Second and six. Play action. Mon fires near side. Completes. And that's your first down to Kendrick Rogers. Boy, that's how you run a play action pass. You get the receiver running a comeback. Again, it's more kind of Jimbo style of offense, old school comeback. Plant your foot, come back, throw the ball to the outside. He doesn't really like the back shoulder throws type stuff. He likes his guys running pass routes. And over the 7,000 mark in career passing now for Kellen Mond, along with over 1,000 in his career rushing. And that joins Johnny Manziel in an exclusive group for Texas A&M. That pass is complete again to Rennick, the tight end who we just mentioned as our scholar athlete, and he smartly gets out for a first down. So I asked you the question, will Jimbo continue to hit his head up against the wall? No, he's done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, why would you? Auburn waited a little too long before they started opening it up and against the spread out Georgia defense when they went a little bit of zone. It looks like Jimbo says, all right, if you can't block him, I got to do something else. Let's see if the passing game can open up the running game. They moved it to the Georgia 35 with this first down. Looked like it was a reset of the clock or something. The officials stopped playing momentarily. Now we're ready to go. Mon trying to be heard to his offensive line and his tailback spiller. Georgia blitzes. Mon got rid of it. It was high and complete intended for Davis. Yeah, that's what he'd like back. Had Davis wide open on that number one, Courtney Davis in the slot. He knew he had him before the ball was snapped and just let that one sail. Tay Crowder, number 30, gets in there. Oh, number big 99 again, Jordan yeah. Davis. He's a lot to handle in there. <laughs> yes, might have scared him a little bit, huh? 6'6, 330. A sophomore nose tackle. Part of that rotation of Georgia defenders that Gary says is about 25 strong. There's nine inside front three players that play. Nobody gets tired. Second and ten. Straight four-man rush for Georgia. Mon will run it. And ooh, he took a big lick from LeCount right at the first down marker. And that is what Kellen Mond brings to the offense that every defensive coordinator talks about and makes him different. He's a really good passer and a willing runner. Inches shy of the first down. And I think he's got it with a quarterback sneak. As the line judge is going to hustle in there and put a foot down. Well, the, the line judge on our side has his foot short of the line. Let's see if the line judge on the other side wins it. Who's going to spot the ball? The old right foot, left foot. Yeah, John it's, that's the one to closest about. to us. And that's... At short. least our yellow line, it's short. Right. Are they going to measure it? I would think they would, but looks like no. They're not going to now. Once they move the ball, they're not going to measure it. Fourth down in inches. and m changing up personnel, bringing in an extra tight end in Beal. A little more beef up front. And Georgia stop a fourth and just that much. Yes, they can. Hard to believe, isn't it? Modern football. Fourth, less than a football, and you run a deep shotgun iso with your tailback. It might as well be third and seven when Absolutely. you do it Absolutely, especially as many tackle for losses. Georgia's been owning the line of scrimmage. There's the third down. They got a spot short, and the penetration of Georgia's defensive line was too much. They couldn't handle it. 
Jordan Davis it was a load for Georgia defensively on that possession. He says, how about me? I agree, big guy. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. Jersey Mike Subs. Smile Direct Club. And by Athlac. Nighttime settling in in Athens, Georgia. Go one, back to that last series for yeah, the Aggies. Yeah, one more look at the third down play. Aggie fans may be wondering, did he make it? Kellen Mann has the ball in his stomach. He can't get it out to push it forward. But right at the end, when he makes his last push, watch the lineman up, linesman up here. He's blowing his whistle. So when he pushes him forward, he had already called it a done play. Georgia back to the ground game. Brian Harrion for a couple. Brian Harrion, the ball carrier. The fourth down play we didn't have to show. Wasn't that close? No, that wasn't close at all. <laughs> Pick up of a couple for Harrion. Second down and eight at the eight minute mark of the third quarter. Jake Fromm, a struggling day, four out of 15 for 72 yards. Harrion hesitates and is lost of a couple. Third down. Boy, we saw Georgia at their very best on third down against Florida, right? Right. And then the last couple of weeks, third down's been a nightmare. And two for nine so far in this game. The three receivers, just as Pickens, Jackson, and Demetrius Robertson over to Jake Fromm's right. Just to underline a little bit what Ness said, they were 12 for 18 against Florida, but last week just three for 15 against Auburn. Fromm trying to pick one up here. He's not going to get a chance. Down he goes. Way back around the 15-yard line. Justin Matavike, who raises havoc on everybody he plays, and that's going to be his fifth sack of the year. Yeah, he's the leader in sacks, and this time a nice stunt gets inside. Left tackle that time, Andrew Thomas. Thomas had a big, a lot of big plays in the run game, but that time, Matabike was able to get a huge sack. And now, backed up, Jake Camardo will be inside his own five, the punt for Georgia. And Georgia's winning this game 16-3, and they've got 72 total yards. That's crazy. No, I'm sorry, 124 total yards. Not a good kick this time. Unless it takes a great bounce, it does take a pretty good Georgia roll. And they're going to spot it right around the 44-yard line. That's where the Aggies will take over. Down 13 here with 6.14 to go third quarter. Touchdown, Georgia. Beautiful shot over Athens, Georgia there. It's a showdown between L.A.'s newest judge and her courtroom rival. The new All Rise Monday at 9, 8 Central on CBS. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, and our CBS crew in Athens. Dooley Field at Sanford Stadium, professionally known as Between the Hedges. And right now, Between the Hedges on Senior Day, Georgia leads by 13. Kellen Mond and the Aggies working from their own 44-yard line. Mond in trouble, has to get rid of it, throws it out to the sideline, out of bounds, incomplete, as we check in with Jamie Erdahl. Brad, it was 20 years ago this week, the annual Aggie bonfire collapsed during construction on campus in College Station. A cherished tradition turned tragic accident as 12 people were killed, 27 were injured when the unlit bonfire stack fell. The response in the immediate aftermath and the subsequent days really shook the A&M community. And today, these decals are being worn by the Texas A&M football team, as it is always important to remember those lost in that accident. Boy, for sure. I think I did the game there the week after that tragedy. We did a game there that year, too. That was uh, a tough time. Yep. 
mod play action. Slapped, completes, and diving for what? Trying oh, to get the first down. Guess what we have? Third and short. <laughs> yeah. Okay, don't get in the shotgun if you're going to run it. Exactly. Time to throw the ball. The in routes have been there. This time, Georgia is funneling the players into the linebackers. They find the seam and get it close. AM Ness only has two plays of over 10 yards in this game. And that's not enough explosion, as they say. If you're an offensive coordinator, you want explosive Georgia plays. Georgia leads the nation in the fewest explosive plays given up. Third and one. And timeout taken by Georgia. Timeout. Georgia. It's their first timeout of the half. Not happy. Wrong personnel in there or something. And he's telling Ajilari and the rest of the group that very thing. High atop Sanford Stadium in Athens, our aerial coverage sponsored by State Farm. So a timeout taken by Georgia, and Kirby Smart wasn't too excited about either the lineup or he's letting Aziz Ojolari have it a little bit. And those guys are all used to that. Uh, whether it's a uh, no pat Thursday half walkthrough <laughs> or the middle of an SEC game, it's the same attitude from Kirby. And that's what Jamie talked about earlier, his emotional streak that he says he will Try to curb a little bit, not Kirby, but curb a little bit if it's to the detriment of his team. That time, I think he got the message across. It's third down and one. Yeah, I think they're going to throw it here, don't you? All three receivers are up top. Mond has time and got it complete. And it's the tight end. Weidermeyer almost took it. Tripped up. Or he would have been gone. Absolutely. And this had to be a perfect throw to stick it in there. Look at that angle. LeCount had a shot for it. And at the end, it was Tate Crowder, I think number 30, that just tipped his toe. Pick up of 20, though, to the big tight end. First time he's made an impact play. And now the Aggies at the Georgia 27. Blitz coming. Mon play action has to throw it on his back foot and lofts it out. Weidermeyer was there. It's going to be a flag. Perhaps to be that'll be pass interference on Walter Grant. He had the matchup he wanted. He had Weidermeyer on an outside linebacker. Walter Grant, tallish edge rusher type player. He had the guy he wanted to throw to. That's why he was even willing to throw it off his back foot. Had his jersey held held down his arm. It looked like to me. Yeah. You see your catch in the fans, defense number 84, 15 yard penalty on the first down. So, Georgia, a penalty that's costly after they'd gone the entire day. Penalty free. Well, you know you're a Georgia fan when you boo that one. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty obvious. <laughs> right. So more yardage this quarter than the first two quarters combined. And the Aggies knocking on the door now. First down at the Georgia 12. Two score game right now. Georgia almost jumped offside. Mon throws too far in front of his intended receiver, Jamon Osborne. Tyson Campbell is covering. Well, you can feel the pressure starting to build right here as AM has this drive pass just a little outside. Georgia's had two three and outs already. If AM puts a TD on the board, you can feel the pressure starting to build and why Georgia needs a stop here. I can see why Osmond was complaining because Got there's grabbed. a handful yeah, of jersey exactly. or t-shirt or something. Second down and 10 from the 12. Mon going to go to the corner of the end zone. Out of bounds. It was Courtney Davis. DJ Daniel makes a quarterback throw. Only one spot on the field that had to be right there and should have been caught. 
The third down play you saw right there, the handful of jersey, and as I said, the yeah, undershirt. It was the undershirt, wasn't it? Wow. And it's third and ten. The NFL might even reverse that one. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Empty backfield for Mon on third and ten. Flags down, Jeez. whistles blow. Give that one to the crowd. We've been here before. This time it's freshman right guard. All start. Offense, number 55. Five draw penalty, third down. True Kenyon freshman Green. right guard, Kenyon Green, number 55, right there. And Jimbo knows that that makes it that much harder back at the 17 now. And it's third and 15. He had a potential pass interference. He had a drop touchdown pass, and now he has a penalty. And it's only going to get louder down there on that end of the field. That's a student body section over there on that hash mark. Mon running out of time, throws to the end zone, incomplete. Two receivers there, and Rodgers and Davis, neither could get a hand on it. Yeah, and I think that's the key to what you said. When you say two receivers there right in the same spot, it's going to end up right back here. Two of the receivers, that's two guys getting pushed into the same area. Look at that. They're, no routes are designed like that. And that'll bring out the field goal unit for the Aggies trying to get something out of this drive that looked very promising at one point. Seth Small will try a 35-yard field goal to cut into the Georgia lead. And the kick is up and good. So the Aggies were really thirsty for seven. They only got three. A 10-point game with 4.14 to go in the third. Don't forget, coming up later in the game, the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's Subs. Georgia dancing in the aisles, or the fans are, with a 13-point, 10-point yeah, uh, lead now. They might dance a little more with a couple first downs. <laughs> I think their defense needs a little blow. That secondary needs a blow. Brian Harris is going to watch this one bounce in the end zone. Georgia will start at the 25-yard line. Next week, SEC on CBS. Missouri locks up with Arkansas on Friday. Then on Saturday, one of college football's greatest rivalries renewed. Number five, Alabama. Number 15, Auburn. The Iron Bowl next week from the Plains right here on CBS. Hope you join us, and we wish you an early happy Thanksgiving. The injury timeline since last week for Tua Tagovailoa, who was at the game today, a resounding win for Alabama. And start undergoing rehab. <laughs> Tua looked rough today. First right. of all, on his nose or his hip, where's he going to start? Got a broken nose. <laughs> the hip hurts, but... Uh, He's probably, he's probably watching it, too. We wish you well in your rehab. Jake Fromm comes out. Throwing. Pickens comes up catching. The guy loves to throw the ball outside of the numbers, doesn't he? I mean, he just can deliver the ball. This time, in between the zone, right before the safety, Richardson can get there. A perfect laser throw. Can't lay it up too high. And look at Kirby say, just like I taught you. <laughs> He, you could see him. He's starting to get it. 41-yard pickup to the freshman Pickens. And a first down, Georgia at the 34, the Aggies. DeAndre Swift made one guy miss. Holy Cuts God. back to the inside. Whew. When he plants his foot. Think about that. <laughs> Everything was going to the right. And in a split second, he plants, boom, and again. He plants and then jumps. One and a double foot cut. That's spectacular. Yeah, High school coach calls that the dead leg. Holy cow. It looked pretty lively to me. It was a dead leg and then a two-foot cut. <laughs> Pick up seven. Second down and three. Number three in the backfield now is Amir White for Georgia. It's a little pitch, though, to Demetrius Robertson trying to get to the corner. Got there. And a first down. Georgia's got some things working here on offense late in the third quarter. So Zamir White got some playing time, and he was able to get in to help with the block this time. Number three comes to the outside. Demetrius Robinson follows it, but his running back clears out the last defensive back to make that thing turn the corner. And we told you in the red zone, almost perfect. So you can just about count on points with Georgia. Would love a touchdown instead of settling for Rodrigo Blankenship's field goals, of, of which he's hit three today. 
Swift switches sides now to Farm and gets the handle. Coming to the left. A stiff arm and a flag. Swift around the left end. The flag comes in. Yeah, I think the flag was on the first guy coming to the outside. Pickens on his block from the wide receiver spot is going to get called. So that will take him out of the red zone if that's the call. Well, they're talking it over. Personal foul, blind side block, number one on the offense. 15 yard penalty, first down. And you call it, Gary. So just when he makes a big play as a receiver, makes a bad play as a blocker. And it's coming up right on in front Oliver. Of He's right there. He's on Oliver. All right. Gets him a little bit from behind as yeah. well. Could have been clipping. So I think that would have been called a blindside block, even if he would have got his head in front of him, oh, yeah, because he Oliver never block. saw the block no, coming. Nope. So the block in the back backs Georgia up outside the 30 to 32 yard line. Jake Fromm has a word with his freshman receiver. Dominic Blaylock in the slot. Blaylock on the move. From to throw. Screen pass to Swift. Freddie Johnson, great job. Yes. This is how you play middle linebacker. You said he'd make a lot of tackles, and he has. He stuffed out that screen right away, sidestepped a potential blocker. Watch him right in the middle. He's got his eyes right on number seven. He reached screen now, and he gets there. Beat the block from the receiver and made the play. Came in as a leading tackler, and he'll go out of this game and is still the leading tackler on the team. Swift goes out. Harrion comes back in. Harrion, an excellent receiver. Boy, these plus 20 offenses for these two teams that go backwards. They get down there, and they used to put it in reverse. Yep. So they get the red zone, it becomes a free zone. Here's Harrion on the toss. He blasts his way down around the 27 yard line. And brings up third down. And a bundle. It's getting closer here to the fourth quarter. Remember last time in this situation, AM almost conceded the three. Oh no, here we go. Another one of these injuries to slow the game down. Same guy. Yes. Leon O'Neill's having a tough day. So they come out to have a look at him again with the clock stopped. 102 remaining in the third quarter. Say something. Here's Leon O'Neill's hit, number nine. He gets up. Jaws a little bit, then starts to walk down. Watch him wave to the bench, and then see the little wave right there, and then I go down. Uh -huh. So both times that O'Neill has woofed at one of the Georgia players, maybe hyperventilating. Yes, that could you know? be it. <laughs> so I was going to say just before that little acting job, uh, last time A&M almost conceded three points, but you wonder if they're going to bring pressure here and try to get him out of field goal range. It's getting close where three points means more and more and more. Oh, you're not kidding. And it's Brian Harrion trying to break away. Broke one tackle, broke a second, and Harrion all the way down to the 18, uh, make it the 13 yard line. So how what, what Kirby did, Kirby said, I smell that you might try to blitz us and knock us out of field goal range. So I'm gonna run something safe where I can't lose three points. And Rodrigo Blankenship takes the field. He's three for three today. The game is three. He is 22 of 25 on the year. And that kick's going to have to happen on the other end. We played three. End of the third. Score, Georgia, 16, Texas A&M, 6. We'll return to Athens right after this message and a word from your local station. What did we do without cell phones, huh? That's a beautiful sight. <laughs> Sanford Stadium. At the end of the third quarter, we begin the fourth with a 31-yard field goal attempt by Rodrigo Blankenship, one of Georgia's 24 seniors. He's perfect today. Three for three. He's four for four. 
That adds to the Georgia lead. One play into the fourth quarter. 19 to 6, Bulldogs. Well, that group just that much happier after their favorite player, Rodrigo Blankenship, just tacked on three more. Career high, four field goals today. And we mentioned a school record now. It's up to 418 points. Second all-time in SEC history. Former walk-on who got a scholarship before the Notre Dame game two years ago. Paid off and pretty he, well, didn't he, it? He knew it, but the <laughs> team didn't. And then Kirby Smart said, Tell the, tell the team, and he said, I'm on scholarship. Everybody went crazy, and everybody in this stadium goes crazy every time this guy takes the field. It's amazing. And boots this one out of the back of the end zone. Let's check in with Jamie. Brad, the first lady of Texas A&M made a trip all the way to Athens. The A&M Aggie dog, Reveille, met Uga today, her SEC counterpart. I tried to get them to tell me what they were chatting about, but they don't kiss and tell. But I did, I did inquire. You know, there's an urban legend that Miss Rev, if she barks in a class, class is canceled. So I, Uga is trying to conspire with Miss Rev as to how he could, you know, help some of the Georgia students in that respect. <laughs> uh, good sportsman, canine sportsmanship between Uga and Rebel. Two good looking dogs, I'll yeah, say that. You got it. First down of the 25. He throws. They might crawl grounding on that. That didn't get past the line of scrimmage. Is it Trayvon Walker who was draped all over him again? That kid's becoming a force. So first they'll find out if it's a fumble or not. Then they'll decide if it's intentional grounding. Was there anyone in the area that he was throwing to? That's definitely a throw in my opinion. They're going to let it go. And it was Trayvon Walker. He just took the blocker and the quarterback and everything in. Gene Steratore is our rules official, Gene. Yeah, maybe you're having a little trouble getting a hold of Gene. Back to the second down at 10 at the 25. Mond rolls and wants to come back to a screen the other way, and Georgia blew that up. He, Malik Herring grabbed the screen man on that play. Number 10 blew up that play. What a great play by Herring, number 10. It was going to be a throwback screen. I don't know if I can find Herring to start with. He's there on the he end. Right Watch there. him right there, right in the middle of the screen. And that blew up the play. And another one. Jimbo Fisher is going, what about uh, Holden Spiller yep. trying to get out there? Yep, no doubt. He's got a legitimate gripe. I do think sometimes they give leeway to those linemen because they could be, the running back could be coming over to block them, so they give them a little bit more leeway. Georgia going to bring an extra guy. They'll come with four. Mond, a third long, connects. And it's a first down to the big tight end, Weidermeyer. Boy, you got to have a lot of guts to make this throw. It's a deep zone. You're throwing it right in the middle of this zone. Watch when he lets this go. He's got the corner he's looking right at. That ball's out a yard. That could be a pick. Mark Webb made the tackle. But not before Mon got the completion. 13 yard pick. I think pickup. that's the most impressive throw of the day. Fromm has one down this left sideline. Those are the two best ones I've seen. Receivers that Kirby Smart was so worried about have not been a factor, but Weidermeyer now in this half has a couple big plays. And that one, I think his arm was hit as he threw that to the well, side. It was Webb again. Webb was cut on the zone last time. This time he's blitzing. He had him right in his face, and there's no way Kellen Mond wanted to get a sack, so he got rid of it early. Coming right at him, watching. He sees a free runner, and he goes, I just got to let this go. I cannot afford to take a sack on first down. So Webb comes out, Georgia continues to rotate on that defense. A minute into the fourth quarter, 13 point Georgia advantage. Vaughn stands in, running out of time, completes it to Spiller, and he got blown up. Nope, it's incomplete. 
Tay Crowder put the hit on Spiller, and that's why the ball came out. Some great discipline with the zone defense. Remember last week, Auburn, I was saying that Georgia's zone was on discipline. Here's Crowder. Watch him stay in his area. Patient, 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 and it pays off. Oof. And a hit on the quarterback by Ojolari at the end, just for good measure. Third down and 10. With three for 13, as you can see. Crowd trying to be a factor on Mond again. Flags fly, whistles blow it dead. Gonna be another one. Another illegal procedure penalty for against AM. False start. Offense. Number 65. Five drive penalty. Third down. They're, they're approaching Notre Dame's record. For false starts? Yep. <laughs> That's four. There's the flinch. Left tackle. Jimbo's going, we're making this really hard on ourselves. Yes, they are. Well, Georgia's helping now. That's an elite front they're facing. Nothing easy here. Third and 15. Four-man rush. Bond throws quickly and got his man. I'll tell you. Good throw to Courtney Davis. Remember when we did the AM Alabama game last and I asked Jimbo about throwing over the middle, and he said you cannot have a good pass offense unless you're willing to throw the ball between the middle of the hashes. Yes. That's the third one we've seen, and they do it as well as anybody. And the Georgia fans are having flashbacks of the slants of Auburn a week ago. Yeah, these are the deep crossing routes. Right. A little different look, but, but just as effective. First down just outside the dark 46. Blitz coming this time. Mon, far side, completes it to Rodgers. And Rodgers trying to take Campbell with him. Finally, the count comes over to help clean up. It's another Aggie first down. And I think right now, if I'm calling plays, unless I get a big sack or something, you see the outside route to Rodgers, I'm thinking right now as I call plays, I can't get a field goal here. I got to get seven points. I need to think four down calls right from now, unless I lose yards here. Kendrick Rodgers, after that catch, you saw him get up and tap his helmet. He was saying, I thought LeCount targeted me to end that play. There's a first down at the 31. Empty backfield. Mon's got the Aggies moving. And oh, what a catch, what a catch by Holy Davis. Thought the back end of the ball looked like. Yeah, and I think it was Devon Wilson, number one, was on the coverage on the play from the left slot. Watch his catch. Wrapped up just as the ball got there. Great defense. Great throw and a better catch. Man. Ball was almost past him, yeah, wasn't it? I said he caught the back end yes, of it. Yes, he did. Love to watch that stuff. A great shot of it. Second down and two. 12 minute mark. Aggies try to rally here. Throw it out in the flat to the tight end. Georgia can't bring him down. He's got the first down. Yeah, he ran right through the tackle of Tyreek Stevenson, number seven that time. That's a big man. Remember, this is a true freshman. He's going to be a future superstar in this league. And you can see him just run through those plays. There aren't many freshman tight end in the country any no. better than that guy. 6'5", 260 out of Dickinson, Texas. And they keep from losing yardage in the red zone. They're one yard into it. First and 10 at the 19. Loads, throws a crossing route again. Osborne, Osborne, touchdown. Aggies. 19 yards. Richard LeCount, the safety, had Osborne on the play. He tries to chase him down. LeCount's. Let it run a little bit. Let me try to find him for him. Coming up. There he is, right there. Watch him run on the play, but he's late. And by the time Osman catches the ball, can't get there. Extra point is up and good. This is getting interesting with 11-16 remaining in the ballgame. 
Georgia try to keep their college football playoff hopes alive, try to go to 10 and 1. Texas A&M try to win their eighth. And they're starting to put it together. 75 yards in 10 plays. The last 19 to Osmond for the touchdown. Now it's time for Exxon Mobile game recap here on Senior Day in Athens. Everybody gets a picture with the head coach and their families, and then you go to work. Little canine respect there between Reveille and Ugga 10. And for the first time as SEC opponents, these two teams get together. And Georgia was not very hospitable so far to the Aggies ground game. Meanwhile, Jake Fromm was cold to start, warmed up on that drive to Pickens for the touchdown. Georgia's only touchdown because Rodrigo Blankenship has tied a career high with four field goals again today. And then just moments ago, the capper, a 75-yard drive, Kellen Mond on the crossing route to Osmond, and Osmond puts it in, and we have a one-score game on our hands. So just what it looked like if Georgia could get one more score and the Aggies would sputter, that the game would be kind of out of hand. It's nothing like that now. Braden Mann to kick. And Brian Harrion's just going to let this one go with 11 minutes, 16 seconds remaining in the ball game. And now it's getting interesting, partner. Remember at halftime, I said that the story of the game was the running game for AM. Right. No yards. The story of the game now to me is Georgia's kicking field goals instead of scoring touchdowns. Exactly. And you know, when you think about it, not just this game, but going forward, LSU, Clemson, those teams. They're going to have score more than field goals. You got it. Yeah. That's been the frustration for Georgia fans as well. Whether they win or not, it's like, what's wrong with the offense? How come we can't score touchdowns? Part of it was the receiving core that lost their top five guys to make number 11, Jake Fromm, comfortable. Well, the young guys aren't young guys anymore, and they're going to have to start making plays. They'll look to see if they can make one here. The Andre Swift out on the flat. Just ran over the defensive back. Boy, he's had some collisions today. Damani Richardson, the true freshman, says hello to number seven this time. Jeez. He's, he can give you the dead leg or the stiff neck, <laughs> either way you want it, right? <laughs> And he got about seven on that reception. Second down and three. Now the give is to Swift. And they've got him bottled up. He's going to lose a yard. Bobby Brown, one of the first guys there. 325 pounds of Bobby Brown. Yeah, number five and number 52 both inside making this play. Watch about a BK number 52 and number Bobby Brown. And Georgia fans are sick of looking at number five make plays yeah, against them. Last week it was Derek Brown, and that time <laughs> it was Bobby Brown. Just about the same size, too. Derek's a little bigger. Here's a throw, and Dondre Swift makes a tough catch down the sideline. Well, what you love about Jake Fromm is how smart he is. He read the blitz off the edge. When he gets the blitz off the edge, he gets rid of the ball, and it's a hot receiver, and he gets it right to him. That's what Jake Fromm brings to the offense. He just doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Talked about Harry and having good hands. Nothing wrong with DeAndre Swift's either. Pick up a 20 into Aggie land at the 48-yard line. <laughs> Two tight ends set this time with Charlie Warner and Eli Wolf out there. Play action from going to go right back in the flat to Herring, and this time it was too far in front of him, incomplete. Yeah, I can't play that one on Jake. Herring was kind of positioning himself, actually moving backwards when Fromm tried to dump that ball out. out. That's kind of just a miscommunication play. Stops things with 9.25 remaining in regulation. He knows. He knows he's got to have a drive. He needs at least a field goal here. Brown will move Harry and over to his right. And then give it off to him to the left. And Harry stood up right at the line of scrimmage by Buddy Johnson. 
Ooh. Yep. He zeroed in on that one back running game. He can feel it, the late shift, he feels it's gonna go the other direction, right there, right to him. Beats it inside, gets by Solomon Kinley, number 66, and makes the play. Just a little too quick, Buddy Johnson is for Kinley. So it's third and long. Fromm will be in an empty backfield. And they've been bringing at least five in these situations. Will they do it again? And now Swift joins him back there. Jake, look out from behind. Down he goes. That's what they did. Aaron Hansford with a sack. Overloaded blitz. They moved up in the line of scrimmage to draw that offensive line in. You move the linebackers inside, and that gets the linemen to go down, and you come around the outside. Well designed. You see it. Andrew Thomas moved in and allowed the blitz from the outside. They brought five again. And at Jake Camarda, you look behind the Georgia punter. He needs a good one here. End over end, trying to drop it down inside the 10. It's actually going to be fair caught right at the 10 by Anaya Smith. So one score difference in Athens. And the Aggies have the ball back when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by USAA. Exxon Mobil. Chick-fil-A. And by Wheels Up. 7.59 remaining in the ball game as we check in with Jamie. We saw quarterback Kellen Mond receiving treatment to that right hand during that last series. He's got a nasty gash on that throwing hand, but nothing that would deter him from leading this AM offense. On the other side of the ball, Eric Stokes has not played in this second half for this Georgia defense. He will not return to the game for an undisclosed reason from the team. All right, Jamie, thanks. Just under eight to go. Aggies with the ball back. Last drive, all passes. 10 for 75 yards and the touchdown. Georgia's crowd has made a difference a few times today. Trying to do so here as the Aggies start at the 10. Play action. Mon throws out wide side, completes. Gain out near the 15 to Jamon Osmond. Here's Gary's playoff picture. Yeah, obviously Georgia will play in the SEC championship, but they know they need to win out to get into the playoffs. But they need to get to 12 and 1. Two loss SEC champ. I don't think they're going to make it. And that would be Georgia beating LSU and LSU still being in the picture. Yes. With a 12 and 1 mark. And that's if everything holds. But there's you got to hold on right here. And Scott Sinclair, the strength coach, trying to hold on to Kirby Smart. He's his he's his belt man behind him, trying to keep him on the sideline. Second and five. Georgia comes with a delayed blitz. Mond lost one. Got a man. Kendrick Rogers and finally pushed out of bounds at the 40 yard line. So here's what he does. He looks to the outside. He looks right there at Daniel. If he sits, ball's going over his head. If he does not turn his hips and run with the receiver, ball's going over his head. Easy read. Actually marked that after a 23 yard gain at the 38 yard line, not the 40. What a difference a half has made for the Aggies. Yeah, they've just decided to throw it. Heck with this running the ball. It'll be a changeup to run the ball. Georgia brings an extra rusher. Doesn't matter. Osmond's got another one. Diving to the 41, maybe the 42-yard line. And the Aggies, just like the last drive, got it working on offense. Yeah, and the offensive line is now at least giving Mon room to step up in these throws. Another 20-yard pickup. Yeah, now he's feeling it. He's dumping the ball off. He's in rhythm. 24 for 40. He is feeling that game. The 11 first downs this half for the Aggies. Mon running out of time, and down he goes. Tyler Clark, <laughs> one of the seniors, with a sack. Right there, a 
Let's see how he fights through it. The senior, his last home game. Inside, runs right through the center and the guard on the play and makes the sack. Kellen Mond looks down. Zone coverage back there. Has to get out of it. Aggies backed up now to their own side of the 50. Mon screen pass out to Spiller. Spiller splits a couple of defenders. Good game. Got a big chunk of that sack back. And we approach five minutes. Aggies on the move. And a huge third down upcoming. What Kirby Smart's defense got dialed up. For the Aggie offense, it's all of a sudden in gear. Out of an empty set. Kellamond is at a hot hand in this half with a third and 11. Mon steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, in and out of the hands of Weidermeyer. Tyreek Stevenson does a good job. Weidermeyer tries to deke outside. Does he hold him, though? That's the question. Watch Weidermeyer try to get outside and then get inside. Does he grab him before the play? Weidermeyer thought so. Oh, oh yeah, yanked him back. Jimbo is going to look at this game tape off our thing and go, we got about three calls we could have had. Yeah. No and doubt. Pass interference. Braden Mann will have to punt instead. Trying to drop it inside the 10, went out right about the 10, maybe the 9, and right at the 10 yard line. So both putters drop the ball at the 10 yard line. We switch back to the Georgia offense with 426 left. Coming up after our game, Adam Rick and BJ will have scores and highlights of uh, the college football post game show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Last play for the Aggies before the punt. Yeah, and that was just after. Yeah, there's the grab again. The ball's in the air. He's grabbing his left arm. And with that, Jimbo Fisher during the timeout after the punt had a little chat with Hubert Owens, our referee. And what could have been wasn't. And so Georgia's got the ball back on offense. The bad news is Georgia would like to just play three quarters because the last two weeks, oh, yeah. the fourth quarter's been horrible. It is. And they needed three or four first downs to put this ball a game away because they do not want to give that ball back to Kellen Mond with a four down offense. I can barely keep his eyes open watching this Georgia offense the last two weeks in the late stages of the game. From throws to DeAndre Swift. We've only got about three or four out of that. You can sense the urgency that Georgia thinks the same way. Throwing on first down. They know they've already had five three and outs to this half already. They need some first downs. Their defense is giving up yards. They want to put this game away with their offense. Abby fans hoping their offense can get it back. Brian Harrion in the backfield. James Cook's out there as well, number four. And he's in motion. The toss goes to Harry. Brian Harrion, a stiff arm, trying to dive for the first down. He's a yard shy. It'll bring up third in the yard. You can know why defensive coordinator Mike Elko loves Leon O'Neill, number nine. He makes tackles from the secondary, just doesn't miss. Biggest third down of the day for Georgia's offense. Jake Fromm goes over and pushes James Cook into the right spot. Gives it off to Brian Harrion, who got the first down. Yes, he did. What effort that was. That's a senior first down. That's a guy that's waited behind some great running backs to get his opportunity. And this time, he takes it behind the big guys up front and gets it in for the first down. We nice block by Charlie Warner, by the way, in Marini. And one more thing, Ness. We said to J.R. Reed yesterday when we were talking to the seniors, did you know that Harrion was as good 
He said, yeah, but he had to play behind yep. Chubb and yep. Sony yep. and then Holyfield Holy and Swift. He just needs a chance. And Harry had said, you know, I press. I'd get in there for a couple plays and I try to make big plays. He goes out. Swift comes back in. We're under three minutes. Georgia with a first down. AM's got three timeouts left. DeAndre Swift's going to lose about four. The Marvin Leal. The Marvin Leal that time, because it's a blitz off the edge, was able to come inside and beat his tackle. And Jimbo has decided now is time to start taking those timeouts. And Swift and Jake Fromm have a couple of words. The Russians hacked the 2016 election. Could it happen again? 60 Minutes investigates. Plus, can scientists read our minds with machines? It's all tomorrow on 60 Minutes. Hope it never comes to that. Time out. After that last play, Gary and uh, Swift and Jake Fromm had a few words. I'll tell you why right here. A&M comes with an edge blitz, which allows these linemen to go inside. Swift says, you ran it right into the blitz. Watch Dondra Swift get up and talk to his quarterback and say, you can't run that play into that. Jake goes, cool down, settle down. Big like Swifty, calm down. Calm down. Couple more first downs and we're cool. 243, it's not cool yet. And down to two timeouts. Georgia likewise has two. Slant, complete. Blaylock trying to stretch it out. He's a yard shy. It'll bring up third down and one. Well, Georgia fans have been wondering, when can we throw the slant? They dropped one early, and they just hit a big one there. Well, and that takes the second time out. Yeah, they're going to gamble on this one. They, they, they had to take it. They have to stop them on third and short. Down to 235. And only one. Time. Can the Yankees stop the clock? George is a yard away from a crucial first down. You got your junior quarterback who's 32 and 6 as a starter. He has struggled in this game, admittedly, I think. But the college football playoff picture looks like this LSU tonight against Arkansas. Expected to go to 11 and 0. And then they've got these same Aggies next week. Ohio State a winner over the Nittany Lions today. Clemson's got the weekend off before they tangle with South Carolina. Georgia looking to go to 10 and 1. And you see the rest. They got a big recruited offensive line. They've recruited them. And the style of their offense is for this play right here. Can they pick it up? Not only that, they put in the extra tight end to boot. Third and one. The toss to DeAndre Swift, and he breaks a big one. And a big first down, and I don't think he's going to be in Jake Fromm's face after that run. Help, settle down, settle down. And up sells out for the inside run. Look at the call. Charlie Warner, 89, is able to get the end man on the line of scrimmage, and you're off for a first down. As you said, because of spread formation and shotgun football, the toss sweep has been Georgia's bread and butter since Herschel. Absolutely. Looks a little different now, but it's still there. First down for the junior out of Philadelphia. Maybe his biggest run of the day gets him to 91 on 17 carries. Keep running the ball. 40 seconds each time, only one timeout, obviously, for AM. DeAndre Swift, a little juke move, and that comes back to the middle of the field. DeAndre Swift slides down brilliantly to use some clock. What? Man. He can do it. That just put him at 100 for the game. He did. Did he know where that first down marker's? Because another half yard, game's over. At any rate, it's second down and about a yard. Yeah, I mean, one more yard and it would have been more brilliant. Because he did what he was thinking about. Don't make a mistake. Get a first down, game over. But I think he misjudged it by a little bit. Yeah, by that much. Well, and Kirby's telling him that, you know, one more, ooh, yep. and it would have been a first down. Yep. But he was thinking, keep the clock going. 100%. Use, use yep. Texas A&M's yep. last time out. Right, like I said, a half yard more, game over. 
There's the numbers. Fifth time this year with 100 plus. The 106 last week of the win over Auburn. Another 100 yard game today. Will it be enough against AM? We got 142 remaining. And again, Jake Fromm under center right at the midfield strike. Swift blasts his way in there. First down, Georgia. <laughs> Kind of a funny call. You slid short, you get it again and make the first down, right? <laughs> and now the crowd's starting to react. That's take a knee time. That's Sam Pittman, the offensive line coach, and Kirby says, your big old uglies up there just did it for yeah, us. Take a deep breath. Now it's Georgia Tech before they play LSU. Unless a disaster for LSU. Started out this drive with the swing pass. Remember, they yep. started out throwing it, and then they were able to run it to ice the game. And to do it, four minutes to go, and to ice the game, that's what you take a lot of pride in. Three first downs to win the game. That's your favorite play if you're a quarterback. Jake Fromm will go to 33 and 6 as a starter. The Aggies with a furious second half comeback. But it's not going to be enough. I just get the feeling from the crowd here that they're like, yeah, we won, but ugh. Oh, that's going right? to be all I'm going to hear all yeah, week. Yeah, I mean, don't you think they're like, yeah, that's, but is it good enough to beat LSU? And that's how you measure. When you're in that position, when the SEC East Championship isn't enough anymore, and you get measured, <laughs> then you know your program is enough. That's right. Georgia goes to 10 and 1. Very respectable game from Texas A&M. Couldn't run the ball. They figured out another way to do it. Their defense was solid. Good, tough football game. And remember, the losses, the four losses for Jimbo Fisher this year now have been to number one Clemson at the time, number eight Auburn at the time, number one Alabama at the time, and now number four Georgia at the time. And the final second ticks off the clock. Georgia with a win. 19-13. Let's go down some happy seniors and Kirby Smart with Jamie Erdahl. Coach, I know this group, this Texas A&M team was going to challenge you today, but what did the whole day feel like with such a special group of seniors and the statement they were able to make? Well, for this group, it's the way they should go out. Look at this crowd, man. Look at these lights. It's an unbelievable atmosphere, and it's creative because of guys like this that care about this university, that give back every day. He goes on the field and gives it all he's got. He's a hell of a leader. Congratulations, Coach. I'll speak with JR now. How did this day feel for you? A win over amazing, Texas A&M? Man. It feels amazing, you know, get a win no matter who it is, senior day. I'm really proud and just to be out here one last time. And I'm going to speak with your teammate here, Hot Rod, for a second. Okay. You get the biggest ovation when you hit this field. What was the final one on at Sanford Stadium feel like? Uh, it was more than I ever could have dreamed of. It was amazing. Thank you. Thanks, man. Well, J.R. Reed said that his mom, Vanita, would start crying on Friday for senior day. I bet she's got some tears of joy for her little boy now as they win it 19 to 13. Let's take a look at the GMC Game Changer. You talk about a defensive struggle. You talk about guys like J.R. Reed and his counterpart in the secondary, Richard LeCount, who had more and more big plays. Led Georgia in tackles last year. He's one of the top tacklers this year. And that tandem creates some havoc for opposing quarterbacks. And it did again today. The stingiest defense in the SEC and the number two stingiest defense in all of college football held on today. Came in only giving up 10 and a half points a game. And today they give up 13 with a furious rally by Texas A&M. But it comes up short. And so a happy group of seniors and the junior DeAndre Swift who had another 100 yard day and now it's time for the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike subs and the reason for a big smile on number seven's face was this third down toss and here's that sounded from Scott Howard all right 30 yard from our 30 Snap to Fromm, pitch it to Swift, get him outside, he's got the first down anymore, 35-40, trip him up at the 42. A quick burst on the toss sweep to DeAndre Swift. They started the game with that play, and they ended the game with that play. And now they're happy with the fans over there outside the hedges. Big win for Georgia, they're 10-1.
seven and one in SEC play. Their sights set on Georgia Tech and then the championship in Atlanta. That's going to wrap it up for us. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Rudolph, Brad Nessa saying so long. Final score, fourth ranked Georgia 19, Texas A&M 13. College football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage is up next after these messages. We bid you adieu from between the hedges. So long from Athens.